just an all-around good guy. And the Mexican fight fans are out here. They're great fans of the Mexican people. This is what makes Las Vegas buzz. Boxing is huge in this city. You see it at the airport when you come in. All the cabs, all the people coming in for the fight. And they're still uh, happening like no other. Is Michael Buffer standing by? One of the best of them all, my pal Michael Buffer, is ready to make the announcement. Here we go to Michael, momentarily. Flew back with him from New Zealand, had a ball with him. He's a great character, Michael Buffer. We're just waiting for the HBO network in the United States to get attuned with the rest of us. And as soon as they are, we will go to Michael. Here's Michael. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, Golden Boy Promotions with Marquez Promotions are proud to present the main event of the evening. This is for the Ring Magazine WBA WBO Lightweight Championship of the World. Scheduled for 12 rounds and sponsored by Tecate. Cerveza con Character, an at and Viva Mexico plan. Make calls with your wireless phone to Mexico or from Mexico as if they were local calls. Nevada State Athletic Chairwoman Pat Lundville, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, WBO President Francisco Paco Carcel, Supervisor Luis Perez, WBA President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Michael Welsh. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Patricia Morris Jarman, Jerry Roth, and Glenn Trowbridge, and inside the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Vic Draculich. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on HBO pay-per-view, ladies and gentlemen, from Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing navy blue official weight, 135 pounds. Professional record, 35 victories, including 17 knockouts with three defeats. He's the challenger, former three-time world champion, the fighting pride of Houston, Texas, Juan Baby Boo. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, officially weighing 132, one half pounds. His professional record, 50 victories, including 37 knockouts, with five defeats and one draw. De Ciudad de Mexico, the future Hall of Famer, three-time world champion, and the reigning, defending, lightweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Dinamita Marquez. Listen to the crowd, Dave. They're going bonkers here. Vic Draculish calls him in. All right, gentlemen, this is for the WBA and WBO World Lightweight Titles. You received your instructions for dressing. Again, I want to caution you. Any punches below this point are going to be called low. Golpes de bajo de este punto ser llamado bajo. With that said, I want you to obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Obedezca mis comandos y protegerse a su mismo siempre. Touch them up now. Good luck to both of you. Token lows. Buena suerte, almost. Well, folks, I told you to get your seat belts on for the last one. This one, strap on your helmets. This is going to be something else. Marquez and Diaz, too. Remember, Marquez won the first fight, but it was a war, and this one promises to be the same. Marquez decked out in the black trunks with the red trim. The baby bull in black as well. He's got that knee brace on. Marquez with black shoes, the baby bull with white shoes. And they start right in with a left off a year or so ago. 
Marquez reaches down below. Diaz continues to circle. Now, let's see if he can execute what Ronnie Shield says in and out. So far, he's in, but doesn't throw a punch. You can't come into the kill zone and not throw against Marquez. He's too good a counter punch. And he's a great boxer at, at, at throwing his jab and moving to his left and then trailing with his right hand and getting you to come into his trap. And you use that word trap, and that's exactly what he does. Bernard Hopkins, one of the best at setting traps. This guy's another one. And he can move to the left, and then you're following him, and then the right hand comes down the middle. I suspect Marquez might come out a little faster than he did in the first fight because he dug himself a hole that time, and he re realizes that. Well, you know, he is the guy coming forward. Diaz will engage every once in a while. I mean, for a counter punch, look at this. Now, for Marquez, it's like, okay, maybe this is rounds five through nine all over again. This is round ten, then, for him, where he's picking it up because and, he had a lot of confidence at the end of that fight. And you're right, Devin. That's how he should be fighting. But look at this. The baby bull attacks and does come out. That's what Ronnie Shield wants. In and out. In, throw, and get out of there. But not straight back. No, no, definitely not straight back. Because this guy takes one step forward, but throws a right hand, and he can reach it. You hear the Mexican? That's the Mexican fans yelling, Marquez, Marquez. The atmosphere is really extraordinary. You know that this is for a championship of the world, and it's only the 135-pound division. Years ago, if it wasn't a heavyweight championship fight, you wouldn't get this reaction. But the smaller guys are really sensational now in the United States. And Mexico and Puerto Rico and the Philippines. And Marquez has gradually honed his niche with the Mexican fight fans, and he's now one of their elite heroes. It took a long time. Is he the workmanlike guy? Not out in front of things, not overly flashy, just consistently hardworking, excellent fighter. But uh, yeah, and Diaz is right there with him here. Diaz it tries to reach, but you know, he is doing what Ronnie said. He's getting back out, so he's not getting counted. Fairly even here. I'm, I'm pressed at which way you go here. I don't see a clear winner in this round, although I think that if you're going to lean one way, you would go towards Marquez. But it's close. <laughs> Only by accumulation. That's why I gave Marquez that round. Let's see if Diaz can. Close the gap faster, land more punches, and get out of there just as quick. That's what Ronnie Shields did. I think that the audio is pretty good in there. You could probably understand what Ronnie was saying. That's what he wants him to do. That's the fight plan. Now, the other thing for Diaz is to pay attention to this left hook coming from Marquez. He dips the shoulder. He does give away the left hook, and he can come over the top with the right hand if he's quick enough. Well, that's the key, if he's quick enough. Is Marquez is so, well, look at those shots at the inside. Boy, this is this is really, really boxing at the ultimate level. As Marquez beating him to the punch, Diaz tried to come in, but you know, Dave, he's making the mistake of coming in, closing that kill zone, as I call it, and he's not throwing. He's so concerned about getting out of there that he's forgetting to throw when he comes in. See him? See him bounce and close the gap? Where's the punch? You go in, you better make sure you get something with you to take out. And then he, he went straight back there, which is something we talked about. Need to move on the angles. Good body shots by Juan Manuel. Diaz is filled with adrenaline. He's, he's working hard. He's coming forward. He's trying to do the best he can. The reach advantage is four inches for Marquez, and he knows how to use it. He turns that left shoulder in more. First uppercut we've seen by Marquez, so he's opening up the arsenal. And there's a good jab by Marquez. So much with the left hand. Excellent hook, jab, uppercut. That's his staple. But and Dave, of course, if you forget it, he'll drop the right hand through. But Dave, the other thing you mentioned was the way he faints. He makes the baby bull move with feints. And when he does that, his hands are down just a bit, and he's clipping them with shots. It's very technical, but he's doing it. That's what makes him a veteran, even as Diaz lands his best punch of the fight there, a good left hook. Two minutes gone in the second. So far, the boxing, 
The pace is sensational. The boxing is terrific. Diaz is not closing the gap. He's not closing it and throwing punches. He uh, continues to waltz in, and every time he does it, he gets clipped. He's getting counterpunched. That's exactly what Ronnie Shields didn't want him to do. He's studying a little bit too long on this situation. How about that sneaky uppercut by one man well? It's one thing to do it against a sparring partner, and it works. But this is uh, Marquez he's staring at here, and he can't afford to wait. Well, if there's any question about the first round, Going to Marquez, there's no question as round two goes to the book. But you see what Ronnie Shields was telling to Juan Diaz? You got to hit him with the jab. He can't go in, which is basically what we've been saying for the two rounds. Here we go. Marquez leading by two rounds after two. This is round three. In the first fight, Diaz was winning by two after two. And this time, Marquez has come out and gained the initiative. Something I talked about earlier that he might do that because of the momentum carryover from the first fight, knowing what he could do at the end. He stepped up the pace here. That's a good hook by Diaz. This is like round 14 and 15 of the first fight for Marquez. Beating him to the punch. Now that time he was off balance, but he, his hands were so quick and his feet were in the right position to get away from Diaz, he couldn't capitalize on it. Remember, Diaz is only 26 years of age, and he has 35 wins in his career. The other guy is 10 years older and has 15 more wins. So, I mean, that's only a win a year. And uh, Diaz, he hit a wall a couple years ago against Nate Campbell. And Campbell came right to him and beat him in a straight-up slugfest because he had heard that Diaz got knocked out in the gym and that had not been reported. So he went right at Diaz, and he went straight at him and beat him. And Marquez did the same thing One of the last time with, with some angles thrown in. And he probably feels he can eventually muscle Diaz. One of the best lightweight fights that I can recall, Dave, was the guy you're talking about, Nate Campbell, fought Robbie Peden in Australia. Peden won the title. Nate was cut. But what a war that was, and it was the greatest night maybe in Melbourne boxing history as uh, Robbie Peden won the title. Nate was upset because he got cut, but it wasn't intentional. You see the jab of Marquez trying to win the battle there against the hook of Diaz. And he was winning it. Just by a little bit in terms of the hand speed, but it was enough. It's Marquez getting off with the jab, not Diaz. Boy, this is really good stuff. Look at that jab again by Marquez. Diaz to the right of your screen. Marquez facing you. Oh, I caught him with the right hand. These guys are in such extraordinary shape. You will see them get hit. You will see the perspiration and water fly. And you will see them stand up. But maybe when you get to 7, 8, and 9, it might be a little bit different. When the fatigue factor rubs your brain of the ability to do what your mind wants to. Sneaky little right hand there by Diaz. He's circling in a different direction now. Problem is, is Diaz is fighting well. He looks good defensively, but he's not winning any rounds. Oh. Look at this! On the assault! As the bell sounds, Diaz says, come on, Marquez answers him. So, fighters are fighters. But he is 36 years old, not old chronologically for fighters, but he's been in wars. So he's an aged 36-year-old fighter. Now the bull has got to start winning some rounds. He's got to keep pressuring this guy, do what Ronnie Shields told him to do, in and out, in and out, but throw coming in. See, he's getting counterpunched by this guy. Uh, because he's telegraphing. He's not really comfortable with the style and the game plan that Ronnie Shields has laid out for him. Well, they better have a plan B because he's not winning any rounds. It's, it's, it's great to draw it up during training camp and, and against a different level of fighter. It does work, and it works repeatedly. But Marquez has such speed that Diaz is getting outdone just by a little bit. But that makes all the difference. 
Now he's coming in, getting ready to throw the hook, and there is the right hand from Marquez greeting him. Minute gone in the fourth round. Colonel Bob Sheridan here, along with Dave Bontempo, we're at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada. One oh. Manuel has just landed a big shot, and he's on the assault. Baby Bull stands the slug with him. Big mistake. Remember, Shields said, get in and get out. He's slugging with him, and he's getting nailed. Here comes Marquez. His legs are still there. Diaz is in great shape, but he got clubbed. Now I see his legs starting to wither. Heels a bit heavy. Marquez is patient enough to wear you down, but smart enough to know when to go for the end. So much for pacing himself when he saw he had him in trouble. As a chance for Marquez from a huge Mexican audience here in Las Vegas. Now the uppercut in this round really turned it around and then set up the hooks. This fight is going perfectly for Juan Manuel Marquez right now. Diaz just not scoring at all. He's not going to win this round either because his, his legs are still flattened out. He's trying to get the bounce back up. He's got a weakness in the left knee as it is. And the interesting thing is as rounds have gone along in fights, he's not been a strong fighter down the stretch in a lot of his big fights. So he, he really needed to jump off the mark here on Marquez and put points in the bank early and it's gone completely against him and he looks like a guy without a fight plan at all right now. And Marquez is not taking any time off as the seconds tick away in the fourth round. Another 10-9 round for Juan Manuel Marquez. He's won four in a row on my score sheet. I got to hear what Ronnie has to say now. Look, we lost that round, okay? Listen, you know why? We stood right in front of him. Okay. And look, make your turns. Make your turns. And you got to fire back when you make your turns, okay? Okay. Give me deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Now listen. And just keep adding your face to it, okay? okay. But look, when, when the guy's close, run your combination. Yeah. See, Ronnie's asking him to faint. But it's the other guy that's fainting and moving him. So Ronnie wants him to do what Marquez is doing. So now my old bodyguard, Pancho Lamont, is watching down in Mexico. So Pancho, we miss you up here in the old U.S. of A. And here's Marquez with the uppercut that was the definitive shot of that round, and it put Diaz in trouble for the entire second half of the round. All right, here we go. Round five, Mandalay Bay. It's a lopsided Over fight, here. but every round is not lopsided. Every round is fairly close, but Marquez has won them all. We talked a couple of fights ago. <laughs> we were showing that it was beginning to look like one of the best lopsided fights we have. Now this is falling into that category unless the baby bull can start winning some rounds right now. He can't let five and six slip away or he can't win the fight because he will not knock out Marquez. Well, he has not been comfortable coming forward because he gets forward and then doesn't throw. He's having a hard time executing the play. He's not comfortable with it. And Marquez deserves a lot of credit for making him uncomfortable in that fight plan. When I say he won't knock out Marquez, I'm basing that on the fact that Floyd Mayweather couldn't do it, Chris John couldn't do it, Manny Pacquiao couldn't do it, and neither could Freddie Norwood, all great world champions. I mean, Mayweather might be the greatest fighter in the world today, maybe one of the greatest defensive fighters in the history of boxing. Wait and see how his career unfolds. And of course, Pacquiao, pound for pound, is one of the most exciting fighters in the world as well. And yet, both of those guys with 12 rounds with one man well. That's why I say the baby bull has no shot of knocking this guy out. If they couldn't do it, he certainly can't do it. Uh, I mean, Marquez is just boxing terrifically. And, and I always like to make the comparison to him in terms of a style in what Julio Cesar Chavez would do to fighters. He'd find a weakness, he would work on you, work on you, lean on you, break you down, and then take you out. Never be in a huge hurry, but hit you with flurry after flurry, and then gradually you go. And Marquez has done that in a number of his big fights. 
Dave, the night you and I did the fight in Azteca Stadium in front of 140,000 people against Greg Haugen, arguably one of the most exciting nights you and I have ever had together. It broke all records and still holds a record for the largest live audience. And Chavez that night with the people going crazy in Mexico City just broke him down. But what Marquez doesn't do is concentrate on those body shots to the liver and behind the elbows. And Chavez had the unquestionably in the prime of his career, he, in the prime of his career, he could nail guys with those body shots that broke them down, brought the hands down, and then he'd destroy them upstairs. You know, there was a time in Chavez's career where all of the boxing writers were talking about him being one of the greatest of all time. And until he, you know, really got a split decision in the Alamo Dome in a fight that he really lost, he got very lucky that in that time he was one of the greatest fighters of all time. And then, of course, he stayed in it too long. Like him is exactly right. He's given him the right directions, but this kid can't execute it at the stage of the fight. Well, against a, a superior opponent is, yeah. is what's happening here. I mean, it, it, it draws up nice. You try to do something different than the first fight. We're going to get in and get out. But what happens when you get in there and the guy you're fighting is a little faster than you are? Now your plan is moot, and now you're not confident in those feints. You know, in the World Championship caliber fighters, there's only the little tiny things that he could do a little bit better than the next two, three, four, and five ranked fighters. And that's the case in this fight. You got a 36-year-old guy who's more experienced, and he's just a little bit better boxer. But it's adding up to winning every round. Winning because every, certainly, yeah. the baby bull is determined. Sure. Keeps coming at him. But Marquez can see what Diaz is doing as if it was a press conference. But meanwhile, some punches are getting through because there is swelling around the eyes of Juan Manuel Marquez. Neither fighter has been down. I thought Diaz was shaking a little bit a couple rounds ago, but nothing big. Both guys seem fresh in their legs and their feet right now, and Marquez continues to outbox Diaz. But the work rate of both guys is nothing short of extraordinary. Halfway through round six from Las Vegas. They're setting a nice pace. But do you really think that you're going to faint and fake out a guy of Marquez's caliber? It's not happening. Now, Diaz did take advantage once of Marquez going straight back and could change the fight if he popped him once. But Marquez doesn't get faked out. Marquez is trying to sneak off that left shoulder of the baby bull to drop a big right hand right now. That's what he's trying to do. Look at that for movement in defense. Watch him sneak off that left shoulder. Makes him miss all those shots. There's the right hand that I was looking for, but it caught him up on the ear. Didn't quite catch him on the jaw where he wanted at him. But a punch like that, even up in the air, bounces the brain around inside, inside your skull and is beginning to take a toll on Juan Diaz. Even a real bull can't take too many headshots. Uh, I love the movement here by Marquez, the foot movement. Jab, move to the left, score right hand, move. You know, the first fight was more of a war because Diaz was winning it at this stage. But this guy is putting on a boxing clinic now. This is tremendous for Marquez. He got himself right back in line to fight, you know, the really big money fight. Look at him chasing Diaz around. He wants to finish him off. The bell ends at six. Marquez has won every round. And the Mexicans in attendance love it. That Cetus is number one. And then comes the South African, uh, Funica, and then Acosta from Venezuela, and Humberto Soto, another Mexican. And then Peterson, Anthony Peterson is undefeated. And Moses from Namibia is 25 and 1. Johnny Murray from England is 29 and 0. And we saw Robert Guerrero win another fight tonight. So this is a really, really good division, too. This is round seven. Marquez is in command. The baby bull is trying to do whatever he can to get him off pace, but it's not working. There he, now he's trying the feints as asked for, but he fainted from outside and could not sell a feint to Marquez from out there. He's not going to sell a feint to Marquez anyway. I don't believe that. He hasn't done it. It worked for him. And but Marquez's feints have worked on him. Better at it. 
And it's also got something behind it where you have to buy the fake because of what's really behind everything. You made a simple comment they're better at it. And it's almost that he's better at all the little tiny things, the real technical things. Therefore, he's winning every round. Not winning them big, just winning them consistently. And winning every round, which is more important. We're in their seventh round, and Diaz hasn't won a round yet. Marquez is a little faster with the reaction. A, a little, little faster smarter, with the foot speed. A little better at the defense. A little better at counterpunching. He's just a little better, but that adds up to a lot. That's why he's the world lightweight champion, and Juan Diaz is not. And the great thing about Marquez is he doesn't get rattled. Though. He's had opportunities. Sometimes he's gotten two Diaz, but he takes the maximum available from the situation and then reloads for the next shot. Doesn't gamble unnecessarily. If he thinks he has you hurt, he'll go for it. If he thinks he's just dominating you, he'll continue until he hurts you. Look at this stuff. The baby bull tries to attack, tries to make a fight out of it, and the crowd loves it. You know, in the prison colony of Australia, my old buddy Tony Caradon is doing some hard time, and I'm sure that he'll be glad that I said hello to him and all the prisoners watching this fight. There's a plug you don't hear very often. The boys in prison in Australia, hope you're enjoying it. And there's Marquez again with the feints coming up short and then popping him with the jab. Everything going his way. Uh, he's just fighting brilliantly here. And Diaz is trying. It's, it's so frustrating for me to looking on him with Nacho Baristan. He's been thumbed in the eye, so that could make a difference. But we're running out of time here. This is round eight. And Diaz in my score sheet hasn't won a round yet. You know, for a warrior like Marquez, if he's thumbed, maybe that he'll pick up the pace a little bit more. It depends on how bad the thumbing is. Because all in reality as of now is coast, and he can win this fight. He could lose every round and still win the fight the rest of the way out. Yeah, he, he's in that position, but, but he, he won't, won't do coast it. No, exactly. And, and you know what? A lot to be said for not doing it, too. You get out of your fight plan, you get out of your aggressiveness, and then you get hurt, possibly, and, and you can't capture that aggression back. Marquez is firing on all cylinders. He's the veteran. He's taking Diaz to school. You know, a sign of a great fight is when you don't see much of the referee. Where's Vic Draculic? He hadn't had to do anything really in this fight. He's refereeing a great fight, but these guys came to fight. No clinches, no knockdowns, nothing illegal. The thumb is an accident. But when you don't see the referee in the picture, you know that the guys are really putting out. And it's been non-stop action. Just raised the jaw that time. Diaz is lucky he didn't get that one on the chin. Halfway through round eight, it's all Marquez. Chopping right hand. Digging body shot, all Marquez. Where's the triple jab? He can't do it. He can't even double the jab. He reaches with the right hand, and still Marquez too quick at his feet. He pulls out. This is a boxing clinic, folks. A well, clinic. Every time Diaz gets in to punching range, he gets tagged. Marquez makes him pay a cover charge every time to get in. And so when Diaz is walking into the zone, about to throw a shot, he gets greeted with a hook or a jab or a jab in the right hand down the middle. You know, Diaz, who's on his way, it looks like, to a loss, he's still 35, and if he loses this fight, he's 35 and 4. But with this lightweight division, who the heck does he fight? Where does he go? Well, Marquez goes right to the top, and he's the world champion. Well, he gets put into all those discussions with the uh, the good 135-pound guys. Diaz has leveled off in the last three years. He's got to a point, starting with the Campbell fight, he's kind of indicating that's as far as he's going to go. It may be, even though he's only 26. 
I mean, Marquez is just totally outboxing this guy in the closing seconds of the eighth round. But look at that right eye of Marquez, totally closed from the thumbing. But you don't need to be a professional judge to realize that Marquez is giving Juan Diaz a boxing lesson tonight. Diaz needs a knockout to win. Marquez can coast, but it's not his nature. You pointed that out about three rounds ago. This guy has a coast in his vocabulary. Uh, you know, and you, you haven't been in danger. Keep doing what got you here. The consistency. And that is the great thing about Marquez. Look at the fluid aspect of all these punches delivered sharply. And he can't possibly see out of that right eye right now. That eye is almost squeezed shut from a thumbing about two rounds ago. Hey, but the important thing is uh, as, you, as you go down that road, we did not see something called to that effect. So he really has to battle that on his own or it's to his detriment. Well, the thing is, Diaz needs to circle to his left. Don't nope, keep coming back. Oh, he just got caught by right hand. Diaz is wobbled. Did Marquez finish him off? Marquez would love to do it because he knows he's got a problem with the right eye. The ball is hurt and for the first time has a hang on. How many clinches in this fight? Two? Not, many. not too many. You know, we talked about the Chavez angle. Maybe not to the body, but Marquez wears you down. Maybe able to take you out with headshots. A lot of time left. Minute 27, 26, 25 seconds to go. And Marquez has got the adrenaline flow popping. He wants to take him out. Diaz's legs seem to be okay, but he's making a lot of mistakes. He's bouncing, you know, up on his toes without throwing punches in the goal zone. He is, he's bewildered. Totally. Nice uppercut by Marquez. How many more shots could Diaz take before he tumbles? Right hand. I mean, this is a credit to Ronnie Shields in that his guy is not winning rounds, but he's in great shape and making an interesting, entertaining, the most entertaining now lopsided fighter maybe I've ever seen. Yeah, he, he is totally lost in terms of a fight plan because what they wanted to do did not work. And he, Marquez came out and continued what he was doing at the end of their first fight. There's no question in my mind that Willie Savannah and Ronnie got him in the best shape of his life. He is in great shape, but he's getting pummeled from pillar to post, and he won't go because of the conditioning he's in. Is it possibly overturn? I don't know. I don't think so. I think what you said two or three rounds ago that Marquez is just a little bit better. Just a little bit better in, in so many areas. Yeah, in everything. Another Marquez round. Here comes the bell to end round number nine. Now let's see if the betters are going to be happy. Because they've already got the win. But that didn't pay anything. The big thing was under ten rounds. Marquez, I'm sure, doesn't even know that, but the fans do. And again, he's just taking what this fight gives him, getting off first, moving. And remember, Marquez can't see out of his, uh, his eye there. It's totally shut his right eye. And we have not heard that in the corner of Diaz. We've never seen a concerted effort to go after that. Well, he's trying to circle left, but when he gets positioned left, he comes back right. And Marquez slides around. He doesn't, you know, he, he won't give him the angle. Well, that's so a, again, uh, just a little fighter. The yeah. little technical thing that, you know, most people wouldn't even see. Now, he can't see out of his right eye at all. And so he's trying to circle left so he can keep the vision of this guy in front of him. This is the quietest round we've had in the fight. Marquez, you know, when you see three fighters in front of you, the answer what to do is what? Go for the middle. That's it. <laughs> and that's what he's trying to do. You hit the guy in the middle. But that's why the pace is slowed down, because Juan Manuel Marquez can't see it all out of the right eye. But, but Diaz is waiting. He can't be waiting. He's lost every round in the fight. There's, you know, less than three rounds to go, and Diaz is a jumping on this guy's right eye. He's been given a terrific gift. That's a terrific gift to, to realize your opponent can't see out of the eye. That means 
You start throwing right hands galore. A minute to go. Galore for that side. Now you hear a slight little rumble in the crowd because they realize they're losing their money on the end of rounds. You hear the little hear the crescendo coming up a bit. They're starting to talk to each other. You don't know anybody putting one down, did you? No. But look at this. With all that the bull is doing, he's not winning the round. Well, he's doing less and less. And this is his opportunity. I mean, you see a guy, if you feel he can't see out of his eye, that's your shortcut. But he really hasn't had a focus in this fight at all. Now, neither fighter has been down. Diaz has been shaken a couple of times, but nothing big. And Marquez is winning every round out boxing. Him. In reality, that might be one of Diaz's best rounds, but he certainly didn't win the round. And he can't win the fight without a knockout for sure. Very entertaining in that if you love boxing, you're watching a master boxer against a very tough kid. And that's what professional boxing is all about. Marquez was not going to be taken in by the fact that Diaz got in the best shape of his life for the rematch. And he's totally dominated him. More so than he did in the fight that he won before. Well, when you know what you've done to a guy the first time and, and you win the fight going away like he did, you're confident coming in. One thing that we did notice between rounds, a good look at Marquez's eye. He can see a little bit, not much. He just got fucked in the top of the head, and it buckled his knees. But why doesn't Diaz jump on him? He's got to know, and, and Ronnie's got to tell him, the only way you win is by knockout. Forget the double, triple jab. Stop throwing wild wing right hands. Do anything you can do, and go to your left and hit him to the right side of his body where he can't see. He's winging a prayer time. That's right. You throw your ears back. You let it go. You know, if I was in a war with a guy and I'm about to die, I'm not going down without getting off every last thing that I can do, and then I'll die. You don't throw a jab from the foxhole, right? That's right. <laughs> General Petraeus, I hope you get the guys over there in Afghanistan under control and wiping out those Taliban. Just like... Marquez is wiping out Diaz. All right, guys in the armed forces, I salute you. Even if I outrank you, I still salute you. Round 11. Diaz has clipped him a couple of times here. Do you think Marquez is in a little bit of survival here now? Do you think well, he knows yeah. he's won the fight and he's just being cautious? I think he's a little tired. I think the pace of it is caught with him. I'm, I'm going to give him that. And when the round began, I think he could see a little bit out of the eye. Not much, but it's not completely closed. And this is the round that Diaz has finally gone after that area. This is Diaz's best round. But with 47, 46, 45 seconds ago in this round, Juan Manuel can still win the round. He doesn't need it, but he can win it. But Diaz has got to put his ears back and go. He's trying to, Dave. He's trying to, but he's fatigued, yeah. too. Well, and, and it's a talent level. Can he jump up two talent levels and beat this no, guy? No. And that's what it's about. He can't do it. And time is not on his side. I mean, this is a guy that Paulie Malinaji beat. But you know something? Diaz looks stronger than Marquez right now at this moment. Yeah, this is his best round. So Diaz finally gets a round, but it's the 11th round. That's his best round of the fight, yep. But Diaz needs a shit boxing. Let's see if he can execute it. Now, Diaz is still a warrior. But Marquez is just slightly a bigger warrior. The urgency now, you would think, is with Diaz, but it's Marquez who's showing the urgency. And now, obviously, you know, it's, it's styles that make the fights, but... When you look at the talent level, Paulie Malinaji clearly outboxed Diaz in their second fight. This is a guy that, that can't get past Malinaji. I mean, could you picture Paul and Malinaji being able to beat Juan Manuel Marquez? These guys are on two different levels. Absolutely. And Paulie Malinaji, a, a good fighter, has done a lot with his career. But, but this is an elite level of fighter here in Marquez that Diaz will try to score a I mean, miracle KO against. The difference here, we're talking about a kid that's going to end up 
making a lot of money being a good lawyer in Houston and another guy who's destined for the Hall of Fame in Canastota. That's the difference in the ability of these two fighters. Ed Brophy will be dusting off the trophy very shortly for Juan Manuel. Four years or five years after he retires, he's going to the Hall of Fame. That's the kind of career. And those little things have shown for the 36-year-old in this fight, he's totally dominated. The younger, supposedly a bull is stronger than Marquez, but not tonight. This has been a boxing clinic, and the pace has not slowed one bit. Crowd is really into it now with a little over a minute to go. They sense Marquez has retained the World Lightweight Championship. It's been not quite what we expected. And again, I'll say one of the best lopsided fights I've seen because every round was decently entertaining. No rounds off. These guys have set a torrid pace. It's round 12, and it's slowed down a bit here. But look at Juan Diaz still no shot of winning this fight unless he knocks him out. And time is slipping away by the second. This is professional boxing, and it's about paydays. And certainly both of these men have earned their paydays today. Diaz is getting a huge payday for this one, and he deserves it because he came ready to fight. And he entertained our audience, and he entertained the crowd in attendance here, and he certainly entertained me. And I'm, Dave, I'm not going to speak to you. I thought it was a terrific fight, lopsided though it was. He entertained me too. We're all in it. The crowd okay. comes to its feet as they battle to the bell. It's all over. And only for the second time in the entire fight does Vic Drakenich have to step in. Juan Manuel Marquez has retained the World Lightweight Championship. I don't even have to wait for the score of this one. Diaz has lost. Marquez has defended his title. We'll wait for the score just to make it official. I gave Diaz only one round in the entire fight. To the scorecards, Jerry Roth, 116-112. Glenn Trowbridge, 118. 110. Patricia Morris Jarman, 117, 111. All to the winner by unanimous decision. And still, lightweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Dinamito. <laughs>